Uh, yeah. Uh, family, y'all. Just keep it tight, keep it tight, keep it tight. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go, here we go. Uh. So, what did Bultmann say about the resurrection? He didn't deny the resurrection, but again, it's not a historical event. We can't prove that Jesus rose from the dead. And so we don't use that as a historical event to legitimize our kerygma. We're going to proclaim Christ regardless of whether or not he was risen. For Bultmann, the resurrection was a faith statement by disciples that God had acted salvifically in the death of Jesus, simply meaning this resurrection, it's a faith statement. If you believe that Christ rose from the dead, that's your belief. He believed that the early disciples believed that as a way of showing how it is that God worked in Jesus' death. Jesus didn't die a loser. Instead, God raised Jesus up. For Bultmann, when Jesus was led to the cross, his disciples realized that he wasn't the political messiah that they thought he was. Instead, that he was going to die a goddamn death. Cursed, he who hangs on a cross is cursed by God. He's under God's curse. And so what happened when they realized that he was a failed messiah? The Gospels tell us what happened. They got out of town. They ran. They denied him. And they went in all directions. Only later, said Boltman, did they realize what happened on the cross? Did Jesus die a goddamn death? Did he die a loser? It was that post-Easter faith that helped us to see that Christ's death wasn't the end. It wasn't the end of the story. He didn't die a loser. He didn't die cursed by God, but instead that God acted through his death. So for Bultmann, Christianity didn't begin with Christ, it began with the faith of the first disciples. Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. When the faith of the, of the first disciples, they believed that Christ died, and they believed that Christ was risen and shared his spirit with them. Christianity didn't begin with Christ, but with the Holy Spirit, and Casemen had a, had a problem with that. Because if Christianity begins with the Holy Spirit, that's going to lead us down a rough road to travel. Because then people are going to claim to be inspired by the Holy Spirit, and suddenly our religion is not about Jesus, it's about the Holy Spirit. Follow me? And we have, we have dual say coming in tomorrow saying, the Holy Spirit is, is uh, inspiring me to do such and such. Ooh, wait a minute, what are you doing with that? Right? Because suddenly other people say, Christopher says, wait a minute, because the Holy Spirit is telling me something different. Okay, now what do you do with that? Right? So using the Holy Spirit to justify things leads to problems. And also to think that God works apart from history is problematic as well. Why would we divorce God and our proclamation of Christ from history? We believe that God works in history. The scriptures have all sorts of, of stories of God working in history. And finally, Bultmann on myth. Now we come to that word myth. So if faith, he said that faith, our faith, unpacks the kerygma, our proclamation of Christ, through myth. What are myths? Stories with universal truths, right? The myth of the flood, for instance. Many cultures have flood myths, which are very similar to our flood myth. Why? Because it contains universal truths, and so we sort of copied those ideas from other cultures. Okay. Stories that talk about gods and innerworldly beings, many of those are myths. The Greeks had their myths. The Romans had their myths. The Christians, said a person like Boltmann, they have their myths as well. For instance, the pre-existence of the sun, right? The word was with God and the word was God. Okay? He's saying that that was just Good Christian story. How it was that that word became flesh? That's a good Christian story. How it was that that word now crucified, atoned for the death of others? That's a good Christian story. He said, we, we often read the Gospels literally as if they were historical reports, but going back to Strauss's words, what did Strauss say? He said the Gospels were 
like a string of pearls, right? A string of myths. Yeah. Yes. So Bultmann was essentially challenging the church at that time, good Lutheran theologian that he was, to, in, to demythologize the myths, to take away all the layers of story and see what might be left. <coughs> he was trying to point to two meanings in myths. The literal meaning is if the story really occurred, the multiplication of bread, let's use that one, right? Did it literally occur? And so how to explain that? There's the literal meaning of it, but there's also the existential meaning. Okay, what does that story mean for you? What does that story mean for me? And so if we demythologize those stories, we'll figure out what it is that, that those stories are saying about God and what it is that those stories are saying about us. If Jesus was able to multiply bread, what does that mean about Jesus? Jesus was God. There was something special about Jesus. Those stories tell us about God, and those stories tell us about ourselves. Winding down, Bultmann said the basic message or the basic proclamation or kerygma of the gospel is what? That life is found in death. Read the gospel, right? The grain of wheat falls and dies, and what happens? It springs up to life. We die like Jesus in the tomb. What happens? He's bringing up from death, from death to life. That's the basic message of the gospel according to Bultmann. Life comes from death. There was a, another philosopher, Martin Heidegger, who wrote a book, Being in Time. Bultmann used that book to be able to interpret myth and to be able to bolster his position on myth, saying, Heidegger said that we are inauthentic human subjects living under the flesh, but we're called to use our freedom and to live in the spirit. So we're going from this fleshly existence toward this spiritual existence. Bultmann said, that's essentially the gospel message. Read the gospels. What are they about? It's about going from the flesh to the spirit. Becoming more spiritual. Bultmann said, that's the only path of, to authentic, authenticity of the gospel proclamation now. Going from this fleshly existence that we have to the spirit. Heidegger said Jesus is our example in all this, of going from the, the flesh to the spirit. What did Bultmann say? Bultmann said Christ is more than an example. What's important is the now meaning of Christ to us today. How is Christ important for you today? Remember, as Bultmann was saying, how are you saved? By you accepting Christ now. So do we see what's happened here in this evening? We see how it is that we began the evening with this strong focus on the Jesus of history, the Jesus of history, the Jesus of history, ignoring the Christ of faith. And then we found how the pendulum swung to, in the other direction to a focus on the Christ of faith, the Christ of faith, the Christ of faith. What does that mean for the Jesus of history? Strike that. There's got to be some road that incorporates the two, right? Which ultimately is what the new quest is about. The new quest is bringing together the historical Jesus and the Christ of faith and seeing how it is that they make sense together.